Action! Today, we will be describing the Nuclear Magnetic Resonance Lab. In this lab, we learn the effect of the magnetic field on a particle's magnetic moment and spin. When a particle is placed in a uniform magnetic field, it precesses around the field direction. The frequency in which this particle precesses is the Lamar frequency. So in this lab, we focus on protons, which have a spin one half, and they process around their magnetic moment. And then when you put in a constant magnetic field, it'll rotate. Now when it rotates 180 degrees, we call it a flip. So when all the protons in our sample, or a majority of the protons in the sample, flip, we call it resonance. And that's what we're trying to find. So basically, this lab is all about finding the different resonant peaks at different field strengths. By triggering the oscilloscope on this slow sweeping magnetic field, we can vary the frequency and witness those resonance peaks. So this experiment is pretty much all set up when you come in here. You just need to make sure to turn on the water to the power supply of the large magnetic field so that you don't burn up anything. These are the large Humboldt coils which create the constant magnetic field. Inside here is the sample wrapped around with uh, two smaller Hemholtz coils, which causes a transverse magnetic field. The transverse magnetic field also creates what Binsky calls the wiggle factor. Now the wiggle factor will uh, help you give you a spread, which will help you find the resonance frequency better. Now you can see here that when you create, when you find the resonance, you'll get twice as many peaks than in the wiggle factor, which is the green line. And this is because <laughs> you can overlap it twice per wiggle factor oscillation. So you'll actually know you're on resonance when you have six peaks per three peaks wiggle factor. So basically by adjusting the frequency here and by adjusting the magnetic field strength, you can get these peaks, um, the resonance peaks as seen there. The sample that we used to do this was water doped with copper sulfate. This gives us a lot of protons, um, and the metal actually helps the, the protons to align. And uh, once you find the resonance, you either rotate or change the magnetic field or the frequency and do it all over again, probably five or six times until you can produce a graph like this. Using the slope of this graph, you can determine the g-factor of the proton. This G factor is a correction factor that has to be applied to the magnetic moment because the proton's not a point charge. So now that you found the G factor of a proton in one sample, you can switch samples. We changed to fluorine, and this is so you can find the G factor of a proton and see how it changes in your different molecular makeup of your sample. Now with the fluorine, it is a lot harder to find the resonance peaks. Um, the peaks will be a lot smaller and truthfully barely even noticeable. So in order to find them, you're actually looking for an area that behaves similarly to this when you slowly adjust the magnetic field strength. So that's, you use that to find the g-factor of fluorine. Now you know how to find the g-factor of a proton. Thanks for watching. Okay, so the green line is the um, magnetic, slow sweeping magnetic field line and the yellow line is where the resonant peaks will appear. So as I increase the magnetic field, you can add the resonance location. You can see peaks start to arise, and then separate, move apart, and then they'll merge again. But this is where we would call resonance. And if you move I mean, very slightly past it, you'll see that it goes back to nothing. So it's difficult to find, but when you do, you'll see this prominent six or four peaks, whatever's double of the green amplitude.